Okay, so thank you everyone uh, for for being here. Um, today is uh, February twenty seven, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So welcome to our Horizon Weekly Insider number twenty nine, uh, and happy Thursday to you all as usual. Uh, please remember that this call is being recorded and it's going to be available in our Horizon podcast as well as in our YouTube channel. Uh, so we can also have a good Q&A session at the end. Uh, please uh, ask your questions on Menti and we can discuss all of them uh, when we finish uh, all the updates. So let's kick it with our first uh, updates from the engineering department. Uh, I'm sure uh, Rosario can provide a little bit on that. Or Alberto, if you please would like to jump in as well. Oh, thank you, Angie. Um, okay, um, this week we have been uh, working on the Schnorr signature implementation and also keeping in mind that the, um, the, the design should take in consideration the requirements for verifying the Schnorr signature in the circuit for creating the proof. So this is a quite um, um, important thing because uh, all the pr many of the primitives that we are uh, implementing should be then verified that we are implementing and using in the sidechain are going to uh, be verified in the circuit. So um, to create a smart proof. So um, one big part uh, of the discussion regarding Schnorr was also related mm -hmm. to that because there are some small details that can make the difference in terms of of security of it and. Uh, um, we also regarding the circuit part we have been also designing the circuit for a threshold signature scheme that will be used um, as a first example of a certificate proof um, for the first sidechain so what does this mean that the first sidechain will have um, i mean for beta we will have um, a simple proof that will be uh, a sort of uh, threshold signature uh, verification. So each uh, sidechain will will uh, uh, have a set of actors. Will declare a set of actors uh, that are allowed to 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 sign uh, the certificate, and the proof will guarantee that at least k of n of these. Um, actors signed it i mean this is just uh, the first example uh, at let me say in in the next months we are going on with the, uh, creating the full circuit that will provide proof of the full history of the site but uh, in this case I mean, for the for this first step we want just to demonstrate uh, that um, the system and then what we are going to uh, deploy in the, i mean develop in the in the main chain um, on the Zendi, uh, we'll be able to uh, on the Zendi uh, proof and allow uh, the um, the certificate to be accepted only if the proof uh, was valid. And uh, regarding this specific um, circuit for threshold uh, for the threshold signature, uh, Ulrich uh, wrote a great uh, document that formalize uh, the components. And uh, uh, this document goes even uh, in details about the, the, the single constraints that the circuit uh, will have. And we plan to, to publish it in the next days. Um, I mean, just for, uh, for, for the community that if someone wants to look at it. And obviously we, will, we, are, going, we are using it uh, in, the, in the development because we, we is a sort of path for us for uh, implementing the circuit and the, and the, and the gadgets. Okay, uh, switching to the SDK, um, a pull request has uh, been approved, uh, and this was regarding the introduction of a base transaction, I mean, um, a generic base transaction that allows the developer uh, to easily introduce Custom boxing boxes, sorry, uh, and uh, also uh, introduce the, um, the ability to spend them and and, and create them. So um, uh, we um, redesign a bit the uh, what was called the the, the, the regular transaction, and uh, we we made it much more 
customizable uh, and so the developer will be uh, will have uh, will have um, will be much easier for him to to introduce this custom custom mm -hmm. uh, logic okay uh, going on uh, uh, with the sdk um, regarding uh, oroboros uh, implementation another pull request uh, was completed and approved uh, and this was uh, about um, the introduction of forger boxes for stake delegation. What does this mean? That a user is able to, let me say, delegate, uh, let me say, to stake some coins that are going to be eligible for uh, be a forger in one of the next epochs. So this part, um, let me say, has been developed and, uh, and also uh, has been developed the part that, um, let me say, keep track of these um, uh, stake delegations, and and so um, and this will be used in the forging uh, activity to provide proof that you uh, have the right to uh, emit a block and that you had that particular uh, stake delegated at that epoch. Uh, also, uh, continuing on the on the on the SDK side, we've been working on the VRF function implementation uh, that is on the Rust side, and uh, um, Daniele already prepared. Uh, let me say uh, the primitive for it, and also the gadget. Uh, but uh, um, um, we have been also working on the GNI. Um, let me say interface. Um, so, or better, we discussed uh, the, the GNI interface that is going to be used uh, in the SDK um, for uh, generating the proof of VRF uh, uh, for, for the VRF output to demonstrate that you're eligible uh, to emit the block. I mean, um, these uh, in the next days, uh, probably uh, the pull request about uh, the changes in, the, in, in Zendi is going to be ready, and so I expect to start the review of it uh, probably or tomorrow or beginning of next week. And this would be a, a, a very big one. Uh, other pull requests are coming, and so, I mean, it will be, a, a, let me say, busy days of, of reviewing. And should be almost everything from my side. Thank you, Alberto. Now I'll pass the word uh, to Alan for the node updates. Thanks, Angie. I just got a couple quick things. The deprecation the other day went pretty smoothly. Looks like there were maybe, oh, 4,000 nodes that didn't upgrade in time, but it now looks that the count is down to maybe 700 who still haven't upgraded. So it looks like the vast majority are on the new version of Zen. Um, the number of nodes <clears throat> for secure nodes seems to have leveled off for the last few weeks. So we're just holding at around uh, 34, 35,000 nodes. We had some outages recently on super nodes in North America, which turned out to be um, an OVH maintenance issue. We had an outage the other day, which was excluded from the rewards. And it looks like we, um, they had an issue and had to redo something. They had to back out and then re-implement it. Uh, I think just within the last 24 hours, we had another short um, outage, and that's going to be taken care of and excluded also. And that was just for Supernodes North America. Beyond that, I'm um, working on ways to detect what we suspect are some, some other types of exploits in the system. So I'm working on coding for the tracking server, and we'll be doing that for the next week or so. Back to you, Angie. Thank you, Alan. Now I'll pass the word uh, to Ruben with the help desk updates. Hey guys, can you hear me? Sure. Okay, so Ruben here reporting from Mexico. I will be updating the service desk uh, report for the past seven days. So as you can see from the pie chart, we the number one tickets are related to the faucet with almost an 85%. So this trend has been repeating for over some weeks ago. Then the second place we have a uh, Sierra Horizon. And on third place, uh, there were tickets of people asking instructions on how to use the wallet. 
So we had a quite a big number of tickets this this past seven days. Uh, we resolved a total of 178 tickets, in which we had a customer satisfaction of 4.4 out of 5, with a total of 123 views. So that is a good grade for us, but as always, we are constantly trying to improve on the customer's attention. And that's it from my side. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Ruben. Now let's have Gustavo for the UX, UX updates. Hi, everyone. So this week on the faucet, we've been mainly working on the admin dashboard and making several tweaks there. So as a result, the abusive traffic that we've been having, it's at all-time low, and the activity, it's uh, actually an all-time high. So excellent news on that front. We've been also working on the HD project, so we are making good progress there, almost finishing the task page, and uh, we've been supporting Martin with web dev tasks, and it's all for now. Thank you, Gustavo. Now let's have Rowan with the BD updates. Hello, everyone. Firstly, just a quick apology for the echo in this room. I was told just before the call started that it's a little bit echoey, so I'll try and fix that for next time. Uh, this is me just coming back after uh, almost two weeks out, which uh, very, very happy to be back. Things that happened while I was away. Uh, so as Vano mentioned last time around, uh, CoinEx have added Zen support to new markets, USDT and BTC. So just an update that both of those markets are now live. However, please note that the withdrawals aren't going to be activated until March 10th. I'm currently working with CoinMarketCap to have those two new markets added to our CoinMarketCap page. Uh, volume actually looks pretty good so far, so really nice integration there. And a big shout out to CoinX for the support. Um, the keen-eyed among you will probably have noticed already that there's a few new exchanges popping up on our CoinMarketCap page. Uh, one is uh, an exchange that was supporting us before and then disappeared off CoinMarketCap and came back. It's FinexBox. There's also ZBG and VCC. Uh, we are currently, as we mentioned before, going to wait a little period just to make sure these are reliable and working correctly, reviewing them internally, making sure deposits and withdrawals work and doing all the due diligence before we add these to our site. But I just thought it was worth highlighting because they are already on CoinMarketCap. Um, that's pretty much it for me this time. Main focus this year, as I mentioned before, and as I keep saying, is going to be Fiat Gateways. We do have some news coming up on that front relatively soon, but nothing that I can speak about just yet. And I will pass over to Angie. I believe she'd like to provide an update on a meetup she's organizing over in Mexico. Yes, thank you, Rowan. So uh, just a quick one. Uh, I just confirmed yesterday that we're uh, participating in a meetup at Tec de Monterrey the university that we have our partnership with uh, on March 10th. So I um, hope to be there as well with Ruben to have a good session and talk with people, the community about the faucet, all the new white, pa white papers. So I'm sure it's going to be great. And as well, um, there's a possibility of a blockchain week, uh, same at Tech de Monterrey. So I'm also going to start pushing some something to, to for us to be there and to continue participating with the community. And that's it from my side. Uh, yes, I would like to jump in as well for BD. So this is Manon from uh, Strasbourg in France. Um, I have an update uh, about uh, videos I do with uh, Medar and community. Uh, that's many tutorials we do uh, on our wallet. Uh, I will pass you the, the channel's link. And as well, there is uh, also the um, contest uh, for Horizon Academy, uh, that is available in French. So we have a, we have a contest. Uh, I will uh, pass you the link as well. That's more for French community, but even if you are uh, an English speaker, you can share the article for your French friends and, um, make the world uh, around you. So that's it for me. Thank you, Manon. Okay, I'll pass the word now to Jonas uh, for some HDE or Academy updates. Hey, guys. Um, so on my end, as Gustavo already said, the HDE uh, page is doing some progress to and implemented the task functionality. Um, so from now on, we'll 
um, at sorting and searching features um, continuously. Um, what the HDE task functionality can do right now is basically pull issues from GitHub, display them in a nice way that is um, accessible to people that are not familiar with GitHub. Um, you can easily sh search and sort them across repositories. Um, so the basic uh, search and uh, the basic sorting functions are implemented already, and we will add some more soon. Um, and re with regards to the academy, I'm just fixing a last few graphics as Linda is currently off. Um, and then later today, I think the second chapter will be live. So that's it from my side. Thank you, Jonas. Now let's continue with Lucy for the marketing updates. Hello, everyone. Uh, so for marketing, we have just released a very fun explainer video about how beginners can host send notes, uh, even without any technical background. So I really love the video. Uh, it's just another manifest of uh, great teamwork. Um, Jonathan wrote the script. Uh, Erica did the voice, and then, of course, our design team, Linda and Marco, did the graphic design and animation uh, of the video. So we received the really good feedback on the video. Uh, people really love it. So it's fun and helpful. Please uh, check it out if you haven't done so, uh, and share it uh, on social media if you like it. Uh, and then uh, also along with the video, we uh, updated the note hosting guide image. Uh, it has everything a person needs to quickly set up a secure or super. Uh, it has a calculator that helps people understand the kind of return they can expect from running the nodes. Uh, so you can see the estimated return based on the type of nodes you want to run uh, and how many uh, nodes you want to run uh, and even adjust the Zen price uh, to expect potential. Uh, and then there's also a list of hosting providers that provide discounts. We currently have them, uh, and we'll add more in the future as we other providers. Uh, so uh, if you provide us, uh, you know, hosting and notes, please reach out. Uh, just like Mana mentioned earlier, the uh, giveaway for French Academy, we also have two other uh, giveaways and uh, competition. So the first one is we uh, that we have the uh, um, fan arc. Uh, that is ending Saturday. So we'll have a community voting for choosing a winner after that. So the winner will be able to make his or her design into different uh, uh, Horizon swag and then uh, sell on our store and receive all proceeds. Okay, so you still have uh, uh, some uh, some time to, to enter if you're interested. Uh, and then also we are announcing winner uh, tomorrow for the sidechain video quiz. Uh, you know, if you all you need to do just watch a uh, sidechain video uh, on our YouTube and then answer a very simple question and you'll be able to uh, uh, get a chance to win a sidechain uh, t-shirt from us. And, and on the uh, event side, we have an AMA with Bob in Guada's uh, tele, uh, Telegram channel tomorrow. So Guada Wallet is one of our uh, partners. Uh, and uh, so please get more information, uh, details about the AMA and uh, uh, the time on our Twitter feed. So we initially planned for other events as well. Uh, for instance, we had a, a we initially planned for a, a event in China, but we had to cancel it because of coronavirus and uh, uh, spreading to uh, spreading to other parts of the world. So I just wanted to tell people, uh, you know, to uh, uh, take care and be uh, take care of yourself during this uh, special special time. That's it for me. Thank you. Uh, pass to you, Jonathan. Hey, Jonathan. Hey, sorry. <clears throat> I kept trying to hit unmute and I kept hitting Marco's face on my phone. So um, all good now. Okay, awesome. So uh, Lucy, thanks for bringing up the node hosting page. So we now have two new people on the node hosting page. So we now have 10% off hosting with Pat Heyman. We also have free setup with a uh, node launcher. We have $10 off three months of super node hosting with easy master nodes. 10% off with ultimate nodes and also a cool one, 30% off when paying with Zen on crypto node. Um, so a lot of options here, a really good set of options pretty much for everyone, no matter what you want to set up and how you want to pay. 
Um, hopefully that list will c- continue to grow, but I'm pretty happy with where it is now. So um, also we will be announcing shortly the winners of the February giveaway. So anyone that goes to getzen.cash uh, throughout the month, will see a link to the new community member giveaway. Um, we had over a hundred thousand entries in February and uh, we'll be, we've already picked the winners and we'll be announcing them this week. Uh, so very excited for them. Um, also, since we have so many changes with the faucet, what I've decided to do is create a weekly update blog so that any, anyone who's interested can follow along. Uh, it seems like we have something really interesting every week, and it would be great to have a log, especially for people who can't listen in on these calls. Uh, One of the big changes that we did this week, uh, we added uh, Twitter, we added LinkedIn, we have Facebook, login and registration. Um, One of the things we had to do as well, uh, we had to adjust the rewards. uh, We had to adjust the rewards slightly down. So, uh, you know, I know some people will be upset about it, but please keep in mind that we're a startup we have to be flexible. We have to be nimble. We don't always have the correct data um, when we start. And basically everything that we do is kind of an experiment and that has to be adjusted up or down as we get more uh, as we get more data. So the rewards on the faucet are gonna be based on many things, including the price of Zen, which is very volatile and, and the number of users we get to the faucet. However, Compared to the rewards before we started so social authentications, it's still a huge increase in rewards for the majority of users. So, for example, if you have authenticated with your social media, compared to just a few months ago, your rewards are almost doubled. So for the users who are really there to engage with Horizon and who are interested in the products, the rewards have increased substantially from the start. And one thing that I can promise you is we have a great roadmap for the faucet this year. And for those users who are here for the right reasons, who like our project, who like blockchain, your rewards will continue to increase uh, throughout the year. So check out the blog. Uh, It's already posted. I put it in the link and we'll be updating it on a weekly basis. Thanks. Have a great day. Thank you, Jonathan. Let's continue with Rosario for Product and Engineering. Hi, guys. Good morning. Good afternoon. From Milan, Italy, I'm here with the engineering team uh, until the end of March. So it's uh, already been very productive uh, having these uh, conversations uh, in person. And we're focusing initially with uh, workshops to identify what our first site chain is, is going to be. And there's a lot of uh, different components that go into the decision process. Uh, so right now we're in that brainstorming stage, uh, but very excited to be able to uh, to do that and that we're at the stage that we're able to think about uh, um, building our first site change. So that's going to be that's going to be great to do while we're here. And in preparation to uh, creating the first site chain, so we've identified uh, certain resources that we need, and we'll be hiring a front-end developer to support that site chain development. And uh, that's something that uh, has been in the works for some time, and uh, we are evaluating candidates uh, to, to be part of this team. And while I'm in Milan as well, I'll be... Uh, coordinating, uh, sorry, Albert, I haven't mentioned this to you, but, uh, or to Rob, but I'll be coordinating, uh, perhaps some, some, uh, video time so you guys can deep dive into Zendu and Sidechain Beta and just have this workshop and, and just so that the community has an opportunity to, uh, understand at a, uh, deeper level, um, and, and from a different perspective from the paper and just, uh, bringing the uh, the conversation to a, um, a a broader perspective and easy to understand. And also, uh, in regards to, I don't believe you mentioned on um, uh, mentioned this uh, code audit. So the code audit is ongoing, and it's at the final stages. So this is for our Zendi code uh, base, 
And uh, the third party company is completing final test and starting to write the report. So we look forward to to uh, receiving that. There hasn't been there haven't been any uh, major findings this far, so that's great news for us. From a community perspective, I'm working with Jonathan and Gustavo to identify a new growth project, uh, and we'll be evaluating a, a full stack developer to support that initiative. But I'm very excited uh, from uh, to to be able to get to this point where we're actually uh, supporting our growth initiatives. And finally, we have our monthly priority review next Monday. So we'll be adding priorities to uh, to new projects and just assessing our performance uh, from a month to month basis on tasks. And I'm hoping that as we continue, uh, we've only been uh, doing this for the last uh, year, so uh, last few months. So I'm hoping our projections and timelines improve and we uh, learn more as, uh, of our performance as a team going forward. Uh, and that is it for now. Thank you. Thank you, Rosario. Rolf, would you like to add any comments or updates? Uh, just a quick one. Um, the faucet continues to increase our user base and growth. And I was just thinking that maybe uh, as a way to get additional funds for the faucet, perhaps we may want to consider opening up advertising to different people who want to possibly uh, reach the different demographics of the folks that are using the faucets. Maybe we could do different rotating 24-hour banners or something like that. I would think the some of the organizations that might be interested in advertising would be exchanges so they could work to get additional customers. Um, anyway, just a thought for the marketing team to evaluate. Thank you. I bet you that Jonathan is dying to respond to you, Rolf. I'm not sure if he wants to right now, <laughs> but spot on. Uh, I, yeah, I, I was basically I, what I forgot to mention is that the rewards did go down this week slightly, but there is a chance that they will go back up if we're able to implement exactly what Rolf said. So we are looking into some options, but um, again, we have to be very careful with um, basically um, how we use user data. But we're looking into ways that we could potentially get more funds so that we can continue to give that back to the community. Ah, wonderful. Okay, well, great minds think alike, and uh, glad you're going down that path. Appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you, Rolf. And now let's um, continue with uh, Rob for the final part in Q&A. Thanks, Angie. Uh, greetings, everyone from Milan. Just to let everyone know, since we are in the heart of the Italian uh, uh, coronavirus outbreak, everything is okay. The office is doing well, and uh, currently uh, about half the team's working from home, half the team that uh, doesn't have to take public transport to get to work is here. Uh, so everything's good. We're still in full operation as an organization. And, uh, you know, I guess the big message that Lucy chimed in on is uh, we definitely want everyone to, you know, take care of themselves and to be safe in this environment, but everything looks to be okay. So, okay, the things on my agenda now, um, something I want to want to start pushing on uh, pretty hard um, starting soon, and, and this is some, it, it relates to the ambassador program that Lucy is doing and just thinking through, uh, we're doing a lot of growth initiatives on the digital side. Um, you know, the faucet it will evolve into something so much more um, is great, and we're getting so many new digital users, but I think something that we need to uh, do to complement that is in-person. Uh, community outreach. So by this, I mean something as simple as um, I, I want to, us to launch uh, a very uh, large and persistent meetup program, um, or at least come up with a recipe that could make this type of program, um, you know, spontaneously grow on its own. So I want it to be very organic, but I just want us to seed it with the right incentives. Uh, so basically figure out the types of things that would be the right cues, the right actions uh, to take during meetups, and and then uh, the right rewards. Uh, can we get? Can we come up with this type of habit loop recipe that would make um, an in-person meetup regime successful? Um, so this is something that that uh, I want to explore more with the team uh, and certainly community members here. If you're actually 
paying attention to this or weekly insiders and joining them, for instance, we're listening to them on the podcast. Uh, once we roll something like this out, uh, please uh, be part of this. Uh, be part of this where you're getting out there within your communities and actually setting up meetups, participating in them, and really just getting the word out and helping evangelize the project. Right? It's one thing to get into our Discord channel and chat with people, another to get onto Reddit and upvote things, which are all fantastic, but we also need to really connect at a human level with people uh, and make this project grow. Okay, so on the, the financial side, um, so we're still, you know, the, the cryptocurrency markets are still extremely volatile, uh, which is just unfortunate from a budgeting perspective. Now, Zen has, has, you know, withstood the onslaught quite nicely, which is nice to see. But as an organization, we're still operating on a crisis budget. And, you know, we have plans where we basically have each division has a set of projects that they want to fund and, and basically add this incremental funding to their, their division budgets. Uh, and, and I still want to move forward with that, but I want to do this in a very circumspect way where we're being conservative. And I think right now we are being conservative, but now is the time where uh, we need to triage, evaluate these projects and see what we want to layer on some new budget for. Um, because quite frankly, despite the market volatility, uh, we're not at our all-time low or even close to it. We're about three times higher than the all-time low. We still want to be conservative. We still want to basically catch up our finances, but you know, we still want to move forward. So there's some portion of our uh, budget that I want to allocate to new projects, um, things like growth, things like hiring. Um, so t- more TBD on that, but just organizationally, just to uh, give you guys a flavor of what we're thinking through. Um, Rowan and Michelle have put together some budget control uh, processes. I want to see these um, actively employ or put in place like as we flow budgets and increase budgets down to divisions, uh, to directors. Uh, you know, we're going to have to have a budget control process in place um, that gives people the authority over their own budget, but then also has, um, you know, tracking and measures performance of spending those funds. Right? We have to hold each other accountable at all levels. Uh, and that's part of this control system. Now, uh, part of that is, First, understanding uh, what are the KPIs that we should all be going towards, and you know we have—I I think we have a fantastic roadmap for 2020. Uh, if we, you know, execute this roadmap, which I have a high confidence in, because we actually cultivate or crafted this roadmap to be something that we have a high confidence we can achieve. If we do this, I, I think it's a really big deal for the project all around. Um, but that said, can we can we derive more granular KPIs so that we can measure performance on on uh, an ongoing basis at, at higher frequency? Rosario and, and her group is doing an amazing job of tracking at a monthly level project priorities and, and performance. Uh, this is something I think we need to extend to the entire org and really derive um, and sign off on KPIs, uh, key performance indicators that we hold each other accountable to. Um, so th- these are things going on in the background. Again, just wanting the community here to understand what's going on organizationally. And Rosario also touched on the last thing I'll mention is uh, we have to put some serious thought into what is going to be our first sidechain application. So this year is is the big year of delivery of the sidechain system. You know, you've got the the beta release of the first generation system um, going you know to our test net um, in March. So that's uh, near term delivery. But then going beyond that. Uh, we just released the paper for Zendu, the the more sophisticated, advanced, like next next generation protocol um, that we're, we're already building. Um, so on, on the protocol side, we're we're doing uh, we're making fantastic progress on the platform layer. Like we're we're already thinking through and and you know, building out the SDK to make this uh, technology useful to developers. But we also need to think about the application layer and how are we going to focus our energy on which applications would be first. The vision here is not to have our organization be the application development organization for this ecosystem. Not at all. Uh, but what we can do, what we should be thinking through is we need to showcase the technology so that other application developers can understand its power uh, and want to get into the game themselves. So, you know, we're, we're, we need to think through very carefully what is going to be this first application, just because the way that we're organized now with the conservative budget that we have and the resource, basically the team size that we have is we have... We have one, I wouldn't say one shot, because we can obviously keep doing uh, different applications, but we, we don't have the luxury or the team size to do many applications in parallel right, right now, right out of, the bat, out of the gate. So we need to pick a very important one, and we think, how are we going to do this? And there are many things that we need to balance. So number one, and I think this is part of the conversation last week that I missed, um, I know Rolf brought up a, a very cool, just kind of like application example of 
get something simple that uses the technology that we're actually building to showcase it and bring it to market quickly, right? So we have we have a timeline constraint where we don't want um, to extend another massive project you know, after just coming out of another you know, one massive project. Um, so there's that, um, but we also need to think through things that uh, you know showcase the tech in certain dimensions and application dimensions that might be useful to application developers. So we want to basically what I mean by that is. Uh, motivate uh, other developers to come to the table and start building useful things. So can we think through certain verticals that might be of interest to, you know, these types of developers? And then the other is we, we just want to create a massive, uh, a massive amount of value for the ecosystem. Um, so things in this category might be something like a price stable asset system, you know, and, and we've been deep diving on some of these conversations and, and I think absolutely awesome conversations you know, with the team of now, you know, how do we do this with, with this type of system as an example, this price stable asset suite. And by this, I mean something that could create like a, a Zen dollar, a Zen euro, a Zen peso. Um, you know, we have distribution channels with potential, you know, customers or partners. Um, we have some, you know, potential backers for them, you know, so maybe we, we have a, a mix of things that, you know, come together and make this an interesting project, but does it actually make use of the tech stack that we're building or would this be a significant pivot in that tech stack? This is also a serious question that, uh, you know, right now it's an open question and we probably wouldn't want to divert uh, all of our attention to a, a complete pivot in the te tech stack. That wouldn't really make sense. Um, so we, we need to first understand what this type of system would entail. And right now we're actually um, doing a research project on uh, just a um, simple example of, of make or die and how make or die works and how we might be able to translate this into the, the current tech stack that we're building. So this is, again, all of the, the ingredients, things going on uh, for you know, how we're thinking through this, this type of decision. So there's a lot going on, guys. It, it's an extremely exciting time for the project, but uh, definitely never a dull day. So I'll open it up here to any questions that may have come through on Menti. Yeah, so the most asked question today is uh, when Zen in Coinbase trading? Not sure if we can answer that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would love to just punt this point in definitive answer, but maybe I'll let him, um, you know, uh, uh, dissemble on this a little bit. Oh, great. Let me provide the really <laughs> non definitive answer. Fantastic. Thanks, Rob. Please. Um, I would love to answer. I'm just going to repeat exactly what you said. I would love to provide an answer. However, unfortunately, we cannot. Um, it's something that is a high priority for us. It would be fantastic to see Zen on there. Uh, one of the things that really helps when we're trying to bring Zen to the large markets is demand. So if you want to see Zen on Coinbase, go and tell Coinbase that you want to see Zen on Coinbase. Help us out. Let's try and provide a larger voice and try and show them that there really is a business case for them taking the effort and the energy and expending the resources to make that happen. That's the best way to really fast forward and make sure it happens as quickly as possible. Yeah, exactly. And as you said, I think we need to show the power of the horizon. Um, so the second question is, any plan to deal with the size of growth of blockchain using recursive snark? Some other magic eventually so large the network centralized. Uh, Lucy, I'm not sure if you just cut out for me, but would would you mind repeating that question, please? Of course, and then I will. Uh, and, and I just put a question on the chat here as well. So the question is: Any plan to deal with the size of blockchain because of other zk magic? Uh, and then the concern is that it will eventually grow so large the network not to say. Okay, maybe I can take it and maybe uh, I, I can. Uh, uh you see the, the the question. The question is related to the possibility to use recursive snarks, or I mean, uh, the question asked for other zk magic to uh, deal with the size or growth of the blockchain. And so, uh, okay. Uh, this is a very good question, and um, I've been thinking about this in the in the past months, and uh, we have also uh, been discussing this also with Rob. And okay, for sure, um, there are possibilities to do it. To do it, and okay, uh, for sure, will require changes in the. In, in the structure of the block and in some primitives that we are currently using. So, but from a um, theoretical perspective, is 
is perfectly possible to do it. So the question is, uh, I mean, this implies many other uh, topic, even uh, the incentivization scheme for providing the proof of um, valid history. So, uh, so the question here is, uh, is focusing on finding a way to prove to someone in a, sus in a succinct way that the state of the Zen blockchain is some state. And without having to download the full blockchain. And this is possible to, to do it with, with recursive snarks. And, uh, and somehow is what we are doing on, on the sidechain side. So the sidechain will prove to main chain uh, a state in a succinct way. And we can use the same approach uh, for our main chain. The problem with our mention is that uh, we're using a, a set of primitives, I mean, for example, hash function, that are uh, completely inefficient to be uh, verified in a circuit. So this will mean uh, changing, and obviously means, I mean, hard fork and so on, but in any case, um, changing um, the ways we... Uh, construct a block, the, the ways we sign a transaction, the primitives that we use for sign them, and, and so on. And moreover, uh, you should have, a, uh, let me say, a set of actors or an actor uh, that is uh, interested in providing this proof that is, has uh, some costs. I mean, we envision some possibilities, uh, I mean, in, even uh, temporary, uh, for example, could be, why not, uh, the foundation that provide the proof of some state and commit this proof somewhere. And if you want to uh, download and, and start uh, your node faster, you just download the proof and the, and the, the succinct state and you run it and, and, and should work. But okay, for sure is not something that uh, can be, uh, let me say, made in a, in, a, in, a, in a few weeks or a few months. But, uh, it's for sure something that, that we are looking at, and uh, we keep looking at it. Thank you, Alberto, for the answers. Uh, so the next question is, I think Rob already mentioned, uh, what are the first applications you are envisioning for sidechains? Is there something that you would like to add, Rob? Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean basically, the, the conversation that I had when, when I was uh, you know, giving you the idea of what we're doing um, you know, strategically in the background, I, you know, I, my favorite, I'll just be honest. My favorite is if we could figure out a way to do like make or die price stable assets, um, consistent with the, the tech stack that we're building. I think that's the, the low hanging fruit that would have the highest impact. Um, now that said, we're just now in the preliminary research stage to really understand what that would entail and see if we can map it to the current tech stack. So I'm not a fan of a major pivot that would, would mean redesigning that tech stack. If that were the case, then I would for sure advocate uh, a simpler uh, example, maybe something like tokenization or, or something that just can um, you know, do a simple application use case to really demonstrate it to the community how this tech can be used. So then we can open it up to other developers to make their own. So so we'll see. I mean, the answer is really deep. And, and I see Alben Al Al is pretty pumped on uh, that, that last question. Uh, I know. He I'm going to jump in on that, Rob, because uh, I, I, I've got like a completely different recommendation, and it's not like an either or. But um, my thought is to do something fun, like uh, tracking people's, showing that they have own pets. So you take a picture of your dog, and then show on a on a side chain with a little app on your phone that you that this is your dog. Um, or the same thing, you can show ownership of of your of your cell phone, or any other types of things. Uh, so it's an immutable way to prove that you own something, and that's a that's a fun way of demonstrating the technology. So that's it, Rosario mentioned that we're having these different discussions on what some of the first ones to pursue are, and so there's a whole wide range of ideas. Anyway, that's yep, great. Totally. I, mean, I would love to. Try I know you want the proof of dog one, Lucy. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys so much, and um, 
we are uh, well very popular today. We have uh, uh, exceeded set at the time of this call. So there are more questions that we don't have time to answer in the live call. Questions and answers inside the chat channel here, Discord. Thank you guys so much. Back to you, MG. Awesome. Thank you, everyone, for being here. I also do one uh, when pets are horizon. So <laughs> have an amazing day and night. And hope to see you guys soon. Bye-bye.